Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So version 6 is just out and it brought some considerable improvements to effects channels. Let's take a look. So in case you're not quite sure what effects channels are or what they're used for, there's two different ways that you can apply an insert effect, like a reverb or a delay in Studio One. You can either apply it directly onto the instrument. So right here I have a piano. And I can apply that reverb directly onto the piano by dragging and dropping it. Or what I can also do, I just undid that really quick, I can apply the room reverb onto the sense portion of that track instead. And when I do so, a new effects channel is created. And now this piano is sending to a separate channel where that reverb is applied. The advantage is that I could now go ahead and EQ that reverb independently from the original instrument, which I can't do with the first method. So if I apply the reverb like before directly onto the instrument, and then I want to low cut that reverb, there's no way for me to do that without also low cutting into the piano itself, which may not be what I want to do, right? Whereas when I use the second method with the effects channel, I apply the reverb onto the send. Now the piano is sending onto a new channel where that reverb is applied. And here I can now apply the equalizer. And now it's actually possible to EQ or low cut the reverb independently from the original instrument. So as you can see, effects channels give you more control, especially if you'd like to process the effects portion of your instrument differently than the instrument itself. With that out of the way, let's take a look at some of the improvements that we now have in Studio One 6. For instance, we used to have a send pan down here that you needed to set independently from the original channel, but now this is linked. So you don't need to put your send pan to the left anymore when you're putting your channel pan to the left. That's being handled for you. If you'd like to do this separately or independently like you were able to before, you can just right click and then disengage lock pan to channel. This gives you the familiar send pan handle back. Now what's also new is that you can double click these sliders here. It used to be quite finicky to try and adjust these correctly. Now you can just double click. Definitely a great improvement. Another improvement that we now have is that it's possible to apply sense directly onto your effects channels. Before you were only able to do that with bus channels. And this is really great because it makes effects channels even more usable. I want to show you this uh, with my second example I have for you today. So in this section here of our wonderful new demo song by Max Kanye and Alina Smith. I have this nice little delay going on. And prior to version 6, I wasn't able to send this analog delay into yet another effect to make that more interesting. So let me just go ahead and open up the Studio One Effects browser and apply a reverb directly behind the analog delay and let's give that a listen. So this can make your effects channels even more versatile before you were only able to do that with the bus channels, which can work like effects channels, but aren't all that useful, especially in larger sessions, as it becomes more and more hard to distinguish your actual instrument buses from the effect buses. It's the same symbol. Also, what you can do with effects channels now that's currently not possible with bus channels is the so-called fader flip function. I use this the entire time now during mixing. I would highly recommend you to put that onto a keyboard shortcut. I have that currently assigned to zero on my keyboard to make it really accessible. And the advantages are quite obvious. So for example, let's say that I want to mix the different signals that are sending into this R&B room reverb here. But how can I find them quickly? Well, if I click on this LED strip here, then I see the separate channels, but that doesn't really help. I still have to scroll to them and find them in my mixer console, which can be quite tricky, especially if different instrument groups that are not all 
adjacent to each other in the chuck list or channel list are sending to it. Then it's almost impossible to find them all. And now I can just hit my keyboard shortcut for fader flip. This is especially effective if you have hide unassigned faders active. You can find that by clicking on this little drop down menu here. And this would only show you the channels that are currently sending into that particular effect, making it super easy to mix those levels in relation to each other and then continue with the entire mix overview. So now I can adjust my reverb mix. Listen to that in context. Once I'm happy, I just disengage Fader Flip again and see the entire mixer console. Once you start using this, you cannot live without it anymore almost. I adjust my RB hall levels like this. I go back and adjust my guitar reverb like this. And it would take me so much longer to find the individual send levels if I had to go through the entire mixer console to find them. So these are just some of the mixer and effects channel improvements that we have in Studio One Six. And with that, thank you for watching.